Hello and welcome to everyone in 673. I would like to start by looking back at the process I used to select my thesis statement. I tried to choose something that covered two of my favorite subjects, teaching, technical communications, and musical improvisation. The first topic I came up with stated, can students improve their intuitive design talents or are some students naturally better at developing design elements that conform to visual logical standards? Uh, obviously it didn't work, a little too complicated. Then I came across an article on the subject of organizational improvisation. This is a strategy originally designed for businesses to help decision makers respond quickly to changing markets. The whole idea uses jazz improvisation as a metaphor describing the thought process musicians use to spontaneously create new music in real time. My new, th my new thesis statement became, are students able to overcome a fear of mistakes using the problem-based learning techniques of organizational improvisation? Uh, a little bit better, but not quite there yet. So more research on my part discovered a new technique for the classroom called Scale Up, uh, where the classroom looks more like a cafeteria with large round tables, minimum lecturing by the instructor, and students involved in problems, problem solving in the structured group settings, setting. In a third effort to establish my class topic, I returned to the class text, craft of research, and restated my topic sentence. I now felt I had a workable topic, organizational improvisation, an approach to collective learning in the classroom. Let's first look at improvisation. Basically, improvisation is composing on the spot and coming up with melodies off the top of one's head. The common method to improvisation is to clear the mind of any previous approaches and create something unique. It requires that the soloist completely destroy any previous solutions used and face the unknown. If the solo is not new, then it is not improvisation and not considered creative. Improvisation is not referring to previously memorized solos, although every musician has a go-to riff or idea that he will repeat until he has a new idea ready. The best musicians are accomplished technicians, creative and aware of their surroundings and existing role in the group. The flow of music as it passes through time must be constantly acknowledged or else the performance can fail miserably. We see the complexity of improvisation as the function of physical and metaphysical components of the human mind coming together spontaneously to create a new idea. Organizational improvisation is the ability for a group of like-minded individuals to spontaneously solve problems through their collective talents. These solutions involve the contribution of each person's knowledge or experience to create an original solution, one that is not a restatement of an old idea. It is based upon the metaphor of jazz improvisation, which we just talked about. This considers building and reconstructing new themes and ideas based on a common understanding of an underlying theme. The strength of uh, organizational improvisation is that it enables organizations to spontaneously solve new problems or predicaments through collaborations and teamwork. The end goal is to equip each individual with problem-solving experience for future use within the organization. A healthy group must learn to adapt to sudden changes and provide solutions quickly. It can do this with individuals who are comfortable in translating acquired knowledge and experience into unique problem-solving solutions. Let's talk about the Scale Up Classroom now. Scale Up is an acronym for Student-Centered Active Learning Environment for Upside-Down Pedagogies. In the Scale Up Classroom, six to eight students are seated at a round table with the instructor seated at a centralized desk. There is no prepared lecture. Students are required to learn a lesson on their own and come back to discuss it with their classmates. The instructor acts like an on-site consultant, adding to the discussion as needed. There are over 100 universities using this format in some of their classes. Minnesota State calls their version of 
of this ALC or Active Learning Centers. There is data comparing nearly 16,000 traditional and scale-up students. The findings can be summarized as follows. The ability to solve problems is improved. Conceptual understanding is increased. Attitudes are improved. Failure rates are drastically reduced, especially for women and minorities. And at-risk students do better in later engineering classes. The website can be viewed at scaleup.ncsu.edu. There are seven suggestions offered by the Jazz Metaphor to be used in the Scale Up classroom as suggested by Frank J. Barrett. The first, boost the processing of information during and after actions are implemented. Educators might consider an orientation meeting that first plans course structures and readings, second designs the actions taken by instructors and students during class time, and third divides how the lessons are to be implemented. Once the actions are initially executed, it would be wise to carefully notate which ideas or actions created the best results. These then can be recorded for future implementation. Number two, cultivate provocative competence. Create expansive premises and incremental disruptions as occasions for stretching out into unfamiliar territory. This is a leadership skill that involves challenging old habits and conventional practices. Some people thrive on change and others dread it. They rely on life being predictable. Learned routines should not be considered improvisational acts. To quote Carl E. Wake, who says, Life in organizations is filled with potential inventions that get ambushed when people slide into old cliches. Point three, ensure that everyone has a chance to solo from time to time. Organizations might consider giving everyone a regular turn at bat and value those who make room for others to shine. People take turns leading projects based on their expertise. This practice characterizes great teams, as in jazz bands where everyone gets a turn to solo. Number four, cultivate comping behaviors. This is the art of accompanying another person's role as leader. There's definitely an art to being a good supporter or follower within any group. By being a good listener, participants tend to encourage others while they contribute ideas to the session. Number five, create organizational designs that produce redundant information. Systems remain flexible when jobs are designed to reproduce overlapping results. People are able to recognize their role more easily by viewing the roles of everyone else and taking responsibility for anything viewed as missing or incomplete. Number six, create organizational climates that value errors as a source for learning. Errors should not be viewed as the inadequacy of others, but rather a way of distinguishing an endpoint to a way of thought or a process that could be eliminated from proper solutions. Sometimes a better or more novel solution arises when errors are made. And point seven, cultivate serious play. Too much control inhibits flow. This reminds us that all things are not to be taken too seriously. Musicians never say they are going to work a song, they play a song. There is a free flow of ideas that can only happen when combining work and play into one action. Now if we adopt these seven suggestions and apply them to instructors and students, the techniques of organizational improvisation can successfully prepare students and instructors for the collective learning classrooms. To incorporate drastic changes in the classroom, we cannot expect to approach them in traditional ways. By looking at the practices and structures associated with jazz playing, it is possible to see that successful jazz performances are not haphazard or accidental. By adopting the techniques of organizational improvisation, we can successfully prepare students and instructors for the collective learning classrooms of the future. Musicians prepare themselves to be spontaneous, so can we.